Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have David Mann, Senior Vice President and Head of ETF Capital Markets at Franklin Templeton to discuss mutual funds to ETF conversion. David, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thanks, Jill. Thanks for having me. You got it. Let's talk about the evolution and client adoption of active ETFs. It's really come a long way. How so? Uh, so it's interesting, you know, ETFs have been around now for almost 30 years, but active ETFs have only been around for half of it. They think they started about 15 years into the ETF journey. So, uh, you know, from an evolution standpoint, 15 year head start for investors associating with ETFs with index tracking funds. And so now having the conversation and educating investors about the misconceptions that you know, from an ETF perspective, it doesn't care what's in the underlying basket, whether it tracks an index or not. That's starting to really get a better appreciation of active investing within ETFs. And why have active ETFs experienced so much growth in widespread adoption? Uh, you know, so it's taken some time uh, making sure that investors understand that all the bits that they like about uh, index ETFs in terms of tax efficiency, transparency, daily trading, et cetera, all of that uh, applies to active ETFs as well. And we're really starting to uh, see a lot of the fruits of that conversation. Uh, even today, I think active ETFs are around 4% of total assets. But in terms of 2022 flows, it's, up, it's almost 20% of flows. So it seems like that message is really starting to resonate. And we did an investor survey alongside of ETF trends, and it kind of backs up what we were thinking, where almost 75% of uh, investors said that they were going to start increasing their active ETF usage. And David, how has the ETF rule impacted the ETF marketplace? Uh, so ETF rule, you know, I, don't, I really want to avoid getting too far into the uh, the plumbing of the ETF. So I would say there's there's two main elements worth highlighting. Uh, the first is I would consider it sort of the regulatory stamp of approval. So the ETF rule explicitly say, stated that there was no difference between active uh, and index tracking funds. And so it was nice to be able to point to that and say, regulatory, regulatory speaking, there's no difference. So then from a due diligence perspective, it's not that they didn't need to be treated any differently. Uh, the second element that made it uh, helpful was really putting, uh, putting ETF issuers on a level playing field uh, the legacy uh, uh, rulemaking process meant that some ETF issuers could do uh, various things with the create redeem basket that others couldn't. So just simply from a leveling the playing field, uh, the ETF really, rule really helped, um, you know, put everyone on, on equal footing. And how have the mutual fund to ETF conversions benefited managers? Uh, so once again, back to the earlier point, you know, investors like ETFs for a variety of reasons. So the daily transparency, the trading, um, uh, the liquidity, et cetera. Uh, so so from, from our point of view, it was really, okay, let's look at the mutual fund lineup and we don't just want to repurpose anything, okay? It's not as if you can just say, okay, this is, uh, it wasn't working within a mutual fund, so now let's see what it looks like within an ETF. It was really, we try to be very thoughtful to say, uh, can we repurpose really strong investment capabilities with a really strong track record, which we think might work within the ETF vehicle? Uh, we public, publicly filed for two of those, uh, one with Martin Curry, one with Brandy One Global. And we're really excited to uh, take those really strong investment capabilities into the, uh, into the ETF wrapper. And David, finally, how is Franklin Templeton uniquely positioned? Uh, sure. So... I, I really love our lineup right now. You know, if, if I kind of think about the investment uh, into two camps, uh, for those that like index capabilities uh, at a really low cost, we have a very strong single country and regional lineup that I think are, are worth a look and very strong in-house index tracking capabilities. And, you know, back to this conversation for active management, uh, we have a really strong 30-plus uh, active, active fund lineup, you know, leveraging not just Franklin Templeton's uh, expertise, but post the Leg Mason merger, Western Asset, ClearBridge, et cetera, really leaning on all those uh, strong invest investment managers. 
Uh, many of these funds have three and five year track record that, track records now that are that are really worth a look. All right, David, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.